Thank you very much. Um, I'd like to uh, start by thanking the, uh, the organizers for inviting me to talk to you today. Um, so this is my, uh, my disclosure slide. Um, and uh, what I wanted to talk to you today um, about is, is just to first review uh, the role of high-density lipoproteins and the HDL receptor, uh, the scavenger receptor class B type 1, in regulating a process called reverse cholesterol transport to understand the roles of HDL and SRB1 in protection against atherosclerosis, and then to discuss uh, some emerging evidence uh, from, from uh, my lab that HDL and SRB1 mediate direct cardioprotection. So I'll, I'll begin just by uh, showing this slide. This uh, illustrates some of, uh, a few of the many causes of heart failure, and two that I'm going to talk to you about today are ischemic uh, heart disease, uh, such as coronary artery disease and myocardial infarction, and uh, cardiotoxic drugs. And, and so both of these uh, will cause damage to cardiomyocytes. Uh, the death of cardiomyocytes uh, results in the remaining cardiomyocytes having to work harder, and then over time, uh, heart failure uh, results and it can develop. So um, in terms of atherosclerosis, it's been known uh, for a number of years now that um, Coronary heart disease is a directly, uh, risk for coronary heart disease is directly proportional to the concentration of low density lipoprotein cholesterol in the blood, and that the concentration of HDL cholesterol uh, is inversely proportional for risk uh, for coronary heart disease, giving rise to the idea that LDL promotes atherosclerosis and HDL protects against the disease. So this is a schematic of HDL and LDL. These are lipoproteins. They're designed to carry uh, water-insoluble uh, compounds, lipids, through the blood, mainly cholesterol. Um, each consists of a, a similar structure, a hydrophobic core. Oops, uh, just back up. Um, a hydrophobic core of neutral lipids, mainly cholesterol esters surrounded by a monolayer of phospholipids and unesterified cholesterol, and each contains protein components called apolipoproteins. Oops. So reverse that again. So LDL uh, contains a single apolipoprotein called apolipoprotein B100, and HDL contains a variety of proteins, the major one being apolipoprotein A1. And, and um, ApoA1 is secreted as a lipid-free molecule, which then acquires cholesterol and phospholipids uh, from cells, and the amount of HDL is driven by the amount of ApoA1. So the secretion of ApoA1 then results in, in the uh, formation of HDL particles, and I'll return to this uh, briefly a bit later in the talk. So this slide shows some of the events uh, that take place uh, in the formation of an atherosclerotic plaque. So it's a, a schematic diagram of the wall of a blood vessel. Um, and uh, LDL in the blood um, can cross into the wall of, of the artery through endothelial cells, uh, where it becomes retained by interactions between ApoB100 and proteoglycans in the artery wall. An LDL that's retained in the artery wall is subject to a variety of chemical modifications, uh, the most well-studied one being oxidation. So oxidized LDL can stimulate uh, endothelial cells, activating them, um, and, and this causes the secretion of cytokines, which attract monocytes, adhesion molecules, which ad, uh, cause those monocytes to adhere. The monocytes enter the artery wall and differentiate into macrophages. Now, macrophages can contribute to the oxidation of LDL. Uh, macrophages take up oxidized LDL and acquire large amounts of cholesterol in their cytoplasm and are co called foam cells. And these uh, foam cells also are activated, secreting cytokines, uh, contributing to the recruitment of more monocytes, the oxidation of more uh, LDL, 
and this uh, then drives the process um, forward to the left. Now, or to your right. Um, so now the accumulation of, of large amounts of cholesterol within these macrophage foam cells can be cytotoxic. So this causes the death of these macrophages. Um, the debris uh, uh, from these dead cells accumulates, remains in the artery wall, and contributes to the formation of a necrotic core. And uh, smooth muscle cells uh, differentiate, migrate um, to the surface of, of the artery wall and form a fibrous cap. And plaques with large necrotic cores and thin fibrous caps are prone to rupture, and then this causes a, a thrombus uh, formation. So when this happens in a, in a vessel, this completely occludes the vessel and, and uh, prevents blood flow. If this happens in a coronary artery, then the result is a, a myocardial infarction. So in, in this view, high concentrations of LDL in the blood promote atherosclerosis because they lead to high amounts of LDL being retained in the artery wall, and this drives this process um, to the right. HDL, on the other hand, can, as I mentioned before, can pick up uh, lipids such as cholesterol from uh, these foam cells in the artery wall, can then uh, enter the blood and deliver that cholesterol to the liver where the cholesterol is taken up and secreted into the bile. And that process is called reverse cholesterol transport. And it's mediated by this uh, receptor called the scavenger receptor class B type 1. So this is a, a diagram of SRB1. The, uh, crystal the 3D structure is based on a homology model uh, based on the crystal structure of a related protein. And this was uh, solved by Sergio Grinstein and coworkers here in Toronto. And it shows um, a, a channel through the extracellular a region of SRB1 from the HDL binding site to the membrane. And so this channel is hydrophobic. Cholesterol then travels uh, through this channel when HDL binds to SRB1. And, and so it can mediate the bidirectional movement of, uh, of cholesterol uh, between the cell and the HDL particle. So in the liver, the net result is cholesterol uptake by the hepatocytes and secretion into the bile. So the, the role, the important role that SRB1 plays in reverse cholesterol transport was shown by um, knocking out SRB1 in mice, which results in a dramatic increase in plasma HDL cholesterol levels because the liver can no longer clear HDL cholesterol and a corresponding reduction in cholesterol secreted into the bile. And similar uh, um, effects are seen in, in rare cases of humans with inactivating mutations in SRB1. They have very high cholesterol levels in their blood. So what happens with atherosclerosis? Um, so to test this, we uh, crossed SRB1 knockout mice with LDL receptor knockout mice, which are predisposed to develop atherosclerosis on high-fat diets. And when we put these mice on high-fat diets, um, we saw a very surprising uh, finding. The, um, when challenged with a high-fat diet, these double knockout mice show reduced survival. And this reduced survival is worsened by the uh, potency of the atherogenic diet. So uh, in black, our mice fed a high cholesterol diet. In blue, our mice fed a high cholesterol, high fat diet, and the, the red survival curve represents mice uh, fed this high cholesterol, high fat diet containing sodium cholate, which is the most uh, potent atherogenic diet of the three. And this is work done by um, Mark Fuller, who was a PhD student in the lab. So this shows the uh, atherosclerosis in the aortic sinus of these mice. Um, we see very little in the LDL receptor knockout mice. Now, these mice are fed this potent atherogenic diet for a very short period of time, about three and a half weeks. Um, but, and the SRB1 APOE double knockout mice 
uh, develop extensive atherosclerosis in their aortic sinus, and that's quantified um, on the right. When we looked at coronary arteries from these mice, we saw that, um, that a large proportion, a large number of coronary arteries from the double knockout mice uh, developed atherosclerosis as well. So normally these mouse models don't develop very much coronary artery atherosclerosis at all. So this uh, is an LDL receptor knockout coronary. Uh, very, there's no evidence of atherosclerosis in that. This is an example of a coronary artery from a double knockout mice, which is completely occluded with a lipid-rich atherosclerotic plaque. And we saw as much as a, about 30% of the coronary arteries per section were completely occluded. Um, when we looked at uh, hearts, uh, the myocardium from these mice, we saw that there was extensive uh, um, fibrosis in the hearts, and we think that this is, is likely due to this extensive coronary artery atherosclerosis, at least in part. But we also wondered whether SRB1 might play a role in the cardiomyocytes themselves. And to do, uh, to test that, um, we turn to a, a model of drug-induced cardiotoxicity. So doxorubicin is a chemotherapeutic agent. It's commonly used to treat a variety of cancers. And, and it does this by triggering apoptosis in, in tumor cells, but it also has the effect of triggering apoptosis in cardiomyocytes. And so acute dox toxicity is managed by controlling the, the dose of doxorubicin treated uh, uh, during treatment, but oftentimes when patients survive their bout with cancer, five to ten years down the road, they uh, show signs of heart failure. And this is because there was sufficient death of cardiomyocytes when they were treated that, uh, that, um, that causes progression to heart failure. So uh, Christina Durham, another PhD student in the lab, um, wanted to test whether HDL and SRB1 affected uh, the sensitivity of cardiomyocytes to doxorubicin. She did that by um, using standard techniques to, to uh, isolate um, neonatal cardiomyocytes, put them into culture. She exposed them to HDL for 24 hours and then washed away the HDL and then treated them with doxorubicin and uh, then looked for markers of apoptosis uh, several hours later. And when she did that experiment, uh, the results are shown here, um, uh, she found that in both wild type and SRB1 knockout cardiomyocytes, uh, DOCS induced apoptosis in the cardiomyocytes. Um, but that pretreatment with HDL was able to suppress apoptosis in the wild-type cardiomyocytes, shown in the, in the white bars, uh, but this effect was lost when cardiomyocytes lack the HDL receptor. She went on to show that uh, treatment of cardiomyocytes with HDL could induce phosphorylation of AKT, or protein kinase B, at uh, serine-473, indicative of activation of the PI3 kinase AKT pathway. And uh, this phosphorylation uh, stimulation was lost when the cardiomyocytes lack uh, SRB1. So she knocked down SRB1 and, and that prevented HDL from stimulating AKT phosphorylation. She went on to show that knocking down either AKT1 or AKT2 prevented uh, HDL's ability to protect the cardiomyocytes against DOCS-induced uh, apoptosis. So she wanted to uh, take this to an in vivo model, and to do that, she treated mice with uh, doxorubicin uh, weekly for five weeks and then examined their hearts one week after the last uh, um, injection of DOCS. And to look for evidence of apoptosis in the hearts. And so she did two experiments. In the first, she compared uh, wild-type mice with mice overexpressing human ApoA1. And as I mentioned before, um, ApoA1 can drive the formation of HDL. So overexpression of ApoA1 in mice uh, results in 
uh, about twofold higher levels of HDL in plasma. And the, the, the other experiment that she did was to repeat the same groups, but this time on an SRB1 deficient uh, background. And so for uh, mice on the wild type background, she took hearts, sectioned them. These are, are representative images stained uh, with cardiac troponin T in red uh, and stained for, for apoptosis in green by tunnel staining. And as you can see, um, treatment of the mice with docs increased apoptosis in the myocardium in the wild type mice. But mice that overexpressed ApoA1 were protected, and that's quantified here. When she repeated the experiment in uh, SRB1 deficient mice, she saw that this uh, HDL dependent or ApoA1 dependent protection was lost, suggesting that it was uh, um, uh, that it required the HDL receptor. So, uh, with uh, the help of, of uh, Mansour Hussain's lab here in Toronto. Um, she looked at uh, um, left ventricular uh, function in these mice and saw that, uh, as expected, um, DOCS treatment reduced uh, left ventricular function in the wild type mice and that overexpression of ApoA1 prevented this DOCS induced uh, left ventricular dysfunction. But this protection was lost in the SRB1 knockout mice. So um, she wanted to, to test whether this was a feature or, or, uh, of SRB1 expressed in the hearts themselves versus SRB1 uh, in other tissues. So the SRB1 knockout mice, as I mentioned, have much higher levels of HDL cholesterol. The HDL has a, a different composition and different structure. So it's possible that these effects could have been secondary to uh, um, changes in the HDL or its ability to protect uh, against DOCS-induced cardiotoxicity. So she wanted to test whether uh, SRB1 in the hearts themselves might be responsible for this. So she did this experiment where she used a, a pseudo heart transplantation model um, in which she took neonatal hearts from either a wild type or an SRB1 knockout mice, mouse and implanted those hearts under the skin of the ears of an adult mouse. So each adult mouse got one uh, SRB1 knockout heart and one wild type heart. After about a week, um, these uh, uh, hearts, the heart tissue becomes vascularized and the hearts beat. And she then injected the mice with a low dose of DOCS, and then one week later um, recovered the tissue and sectioned and, and tested for apoptosis uh, in the transplanted myocardium. And so when she did the experiment, she saw that uh, in the same mouse, the same adult mouse, the transplanted um, uh, wild-type hearts uh, were resistant to this very low dose of DOCS and uh, 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 apoptosis in response to this very low dose of DOCS, but the SRB1 knockout uh, hearts exhibited much more sensitivity uh, to DOCS induced cardiotoxicity, suggesting that this was in fact a feature of SRB1 in the hearts as opposed to a uh, secondary effect of, of changes in, in HDL. So um, this then gives rise to our working model for, for what's happening in the cardiomyocytes. Um, SRB1 uh, is mediating HDL signaling, leading to activation of this pro-survival pathway, the PI3 kinase AKT pathway. And this could be the result of assembly of signaling complexes on the cytoplasmic tail of SRB1. There's some evidence uh, from our lab and others for this but it may also uh, involve interactions with other signaling receptors, such as uh, receptors for um, uh, signaling lipids, sphingosine 1-phosphate. Um, and, and through the assembly of these complexes, this leads to uh, uh, activation of this pro-survival pathway, which then protects cardiomyocytes against uh, cell death. 
Um, now, the implications for this uh, are, are uh, several fold. One is that in the atherosclerosis area, there are a number of efforts to um, produce uh, HDL mimetics, which can be used to promote reverse cholesterol transport. But these may also uh, uh, be used for other more acute treatments, such as when patients are, are receiving uh, doxorubicin, th doxorubicin therapy. And we have some evidence that injection of APOA1 into mice uh, can also lead to protection against dox-induced cardiotoxicity in the same way that we saw overexpression of APOA1. So with that, I'll end the talk. Um, I acknowledge again that the work that I showed you was done by Christina Durham and Mark Fuller in the lab. And, uh, and uh, again, acknowledge the, the collaboration of Mansour Hussein and, and uh, Abdul Momin in his lab and many others on this project. And I'll, I'll thank you uh, for sticking around to listen.